yeah. And if there's always instead of some lake, we go down there for the week. Annie won't be here tonight? I have no idea. Okay. Annie won't be here tonight, so. Can I not be here tonight? Yes, you can. But you're not getting out the door. This is not about the We know about the water. There'll be no water executive session water thing tonight. We just have a personal thing for us. So okay. there should be a start executive. We want progress on the water. We have attorneys of law, so it's going to take forever. Everybody ready? Yeah. You're late. I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Would you give us a roll call, please? Councilmember Kelly. Present. Councilmember Miller. Here. Councilmember Best. Here. Councilmember Mendoza. Here. Councilmember Lane. Vice Mayor Turner. Here. Mayor Croft. Here. Let's move on to introduction, presentations, and proclamations. The first agenda item is presentation of Outstanding Citizen Awards to Jaden Kennedy and Strad Beeson, Beeson for going above and beyond normal civic responsibility by assisting the Chino Valley Police Department in apprehending a shoplifting subject actively attempting to flee from pursuing officers. Chief, will you want to come up with your... <clears throat> We're actually involved in the incident and recommended these young men for these awards, so I'm going to let them explain a little bit about what happened. Okay, guys, go. So, uh, yeah, you're good. You're good. Just hold up closer. Okay. How about this one? This there one's better. So go. on March 4th, 2018, um, myself and Sergeant Prater responded to the Maverick here in town on a report of a shoplifter in the store. Um, as we arrived on scene, the shoplifter had fled the store on foot. Um, an employee was chasing the suspect and had lost him in a nearby neighborhood. Sergeant Prater and I were driving around the neighborhood trying to find the suspect. When we learned that there was an easement behind the houses in between the two streets um, due to high fencing and other issues. I saw these two young gentlemen, Strad and Jaden, who I want to come up at this time, if you guys want to come up here for me, please. Uh, Jaden Kenny, and it's Strad Baven, actually. I spelt it wrong initially. Um, these two gentlemen were actually playing in the easement, and I called out for help, and I said, hey, did you guys see a guy wearing all black run through here? They kind of gave the point like this, like he's hiding over there. Um, by the time we were able to run around and get into that area, the suspect had fled and hit again. He actually broke into someone's camping trailer, was hiding in there. So once again, we were looking for him. They were going into their backyard. I hollered out to him, hey, where'd he go? And they kind of pointed like this again. Hey. <laughs> He's in the trailer. Um, at that point, we approached the trailer. The suspect came out. Sergeant Parade and I took him into custody. Um, and if we wouldn't have caught him if it were these two guys because we were already starting to clear the area, um, not finding the suspect initially when I hollered out to him. I wanted to recognize them because in today's day and age, we don't get kids their ages that want to get involved. They would just rather not get involved. Um, yeah, it, 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 it started out as just a shoplift, but it ended up being a lot more. The suspect um, 
has other charges pending from other jurisdictions for the same thing. Um, he had done multiple shopliftings in several days at the Maverick, and that's when they had seen him inside the store. Um, so if it hadn't been for them taking pride in their community, wanting to step up and give a couple old police officers a hand, we probably wouldn't have caught them. So that's why I wanted to recognize these two young gentlemen for their courageous actions. So. Thank you, gentlemen. You're stars among some of the youngsters that we have now for what you're doing. Okay, let's go to item B. Presentation of accommodation to Officer Fernando Silva and Officer Justin Angel for performance above and beyond the call of duty by saving the life of a community member on March 2nd, 2018. Chief? Mayor and Council, I'm very proud tonight to recognize two of our officers for outstanding work in the field, uh, saving a life. Uh, they'll be receiving a life-saving medal tonight. Like you said, on March the 2nd, uh, these two officers responded to a gentleman who was unconscious and not breathing. They were able to assess him and determine they believed it to be a heroin overdose. Uh, the officers carry the Narcan uh, sprays on their person. They were able to administer Narcan and do other life-saving measures until the fire department arrived and due to their quick thinking and actions they saved this gentleman's life so congratulations and i will present them with their awards The mayor has allowed me a few extra moments tonight, even though this isn't on the agenda, since we're recognizing outstanding performance in the police department. I also wanted to mention a couple other folks that have won awards. Uh, we have animal control officer Angela Olander with us tonight. She was just recognized as the animal control officer of the year for the state of Arizona at their conference two weeks ago. So Angela, if you could stand up. She's got her family with her too. It was, you know, we only found out about this late this afternoon. So thank you for coming, Angela, on short notice. Um, and I also want to recognize two other officers that aren't here tonight. Um, Officer Sophia Newton just received her pilot's license from the FAA to fly our drone. So she's now fully licensed to fly the drone, uh, which is very important cool. as far as the liability that she's been through all the training and done all the testing. Wow. So uh, that's amazing. And Officer Tiffany Farmer just completed the nine week canine academy down in tucson so now she's a certified canine handler and she'll be back on the street this next week so just wanted to recognize them too all right let's go on to call to the public call to the public is an opportunity for the public to address the council on any issue within the jurisdiction of the council that is not on the agenda public comment is encouraged Individuals are limited to speak for three minutes. The total time for call to the public may be up to 30 minutes per meeting. Council taken, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, scheduling the matter for further consideration, and 
decision on a later date or responding to criticism. Is there anyone who would like to speak and call to the public? Let's hold off a minute till we tell the good guys leave. Time for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> Good guys. <laughs> well, I can't dispute that. <laughs> Jack might not let you go. Do we get to go? Yeah. Wells, go ahead. Thank you. My name is Wells Geary. I'm a 15 year about Valley resident over on Allerton Way, Highlands Ranch. What a wonderful spring it has been, and it's just starting. The Chino Valley Review, thanks to Mr. Wheeler and his associates, has been covering our town's ongoing and immense efforts to better serve its citizens. I look forward to the next installment. In partnership with our chamber, Mr. Coomer, the Chino Valley Citizens Academy just wound down its sixth, maybe seventh year of keeping we citizens informed on how, not what, but how our local government functions. A government of people, by the people. And for the citizens of Chino. We also learn more about the ongoing great efforts by our police department in assuring public safety. Absolutely. And just recently, our own Overflow Coffee House recently hosted a town presentation. Thank you, Mr. Sanks and Mr. Palmer. A town presentation on the contemporary and future pathways to the future and further growth and development of our great valley. And out and about in our town, we can hear constructive conversations. Can we hold on to our vision? Do we know what our culture is for the future of our great valley? We can be thankful for our town's leadership. And we don't want to be too far behind you, but we are behind you. And most importantly, and I'm sorry I did not address the, the council, and Mr. Mayor, and um, lady town manager. Uh, most importantly, we thank you for your collective good judgments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak during call to the public? Chief. Fire chief. We state your name. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Freitag, Fire Chief, Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, I come before you tonight. Just, uh, I think you received it in the review that I sent out on Friday, but publicly I'd like to state we did receive an attorney general's opinion uh, last Thursday, late in the day, that confirmed that Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority is legal under state law right. and that there was no disenfranchisement of any voters in the creation of the authority. This is something that we knew, uh, and I find it interesting that the questions posed um, asked about disenfranchisement of only one segment of voters and not another one. They didn't, there was no question about the Chino Valley voters, but that just goes to the um, group that is is pushing this type of narrative so um, from that standpoint i just wanted to uh, come before you uh, again and and thank you for your support and partnership um, we're going to continue pressing forward as we have and, and doing what we think are the the right things for the community and the people that we serve and i think the ag's opinion puts a stake in at least that part of the question great that's great Turn. so Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief, very much. And we heartily support you guys because you do a hell of a job. Thank you. Thank you. Response to the public. Any other comments? Response to the public. We have none. Let's go on to current events, summaries, and reports. I don't have anything. 
Mike? I do. Councilman uh, Best? And beginning this month, we had our first meeting for the 50th celebration of our birthday party. And we had 14 people attend. I would like to see another 28 attend next meeting. I invited everybody to bring back a friend. Some of the things that they were talking about was uh, raffling off tickets to purchase the uh, two cowboys shaking hands over the fence and putting at the north end of town in the roundabout at Four North. They're talking about a uh, time capsule uh, <coughs> that we could go ahead and put things in and we'll seal it up for another 50 years and let the next generation open up and see how great we were. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about maybe a concert at the end of the day to go ahead and bring everything up. Uh, we're talking about writing a book and the book would be about Chino Valley since it became a town. Maybe a little bit history of how we got to where we are, the reasons that uh, we are where we are, the uh, 400 and some people that started our town. It was interesting, we had a, her last name is Cloud, I believe. She was the mayor in the late 70s, early 80s. She was at our meeting. One of her counselors, uh, Bobby Wick, was also at our meeting. So we have some people with some history they can add. They're interested in us doing a book so we will go ahead and pursue that story with our businesses. I will be talking at the chamber luncheon uh, in May to go ahead and get more support. So if you're interested in throwing a party and being part of, part of the people that are planning it, we'll see you May 2nd at the community center at 6 p.m. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Anyone on this side? No, I'm sorry, Mike, what was that time? 6 p.m. Thank you. And was that Leona Couch? Leona yes. Couch. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll yes. Go, go, you can just go ahead and tell them who it was. Oh, it's Leona Couch. Yeah, I got Leona her name Couch. wrong. But yeah. and others that have been here that can help us on this party, they know who these people are. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? He's talking about you. I haven't been first week. <clears throat> Let's go on. All right. Thank you. Uh, town manager. Okay, you guys have to bear with me. I have a few things for this evening. So, Vicki, if you want to bring up the first one. Uh, last month, we only had one meeting, so I didn't have an opportunity to uh, acknowledge the people who had March work anniversaries. So I would like to acknowledge Mike Bobay, Lynn Close, Vicki Ferguson, Kurt Morrell, and Joseph Murray in the police department. So those are our March anniversaries. And our April anniversaries are... Ta-da! Haley Bird, Angela Chamberlain, who just left, Steve Sellers, and Clinton Schaefer. So uh, thank you all for your years of service with the town. Next, I, I would like to uh, thank <laughs> Council Member Mendoza on behalf of <laughs> our whole community, and uh, especially for our community services department for dancing for the stars for the Boys and Girls Club. Um, as most of you know, they raised over $200,000 for all the boys and girls clubs in our communities. Uh, it was a lot of fun for everyone who did attend, and uh, obviously Corey did a great job dancing. So thank you, Councilmember Mendoza. You're welcome. And, and for the record, um, I think you did hear that Mr. Turner would like to dance and Miss Lane would like to judge. So right, if you want to turn in some names next, next year, year yeah, we, <laughs> you've got we your next victims. We can't call him Twinkle Toes anymore either. Yeah, yeah. He did a great job, though, for all of us that were there. Really it was great. Really cool. It was fun. Um, so next, I wanted to talk about uh, a little bit about this tree that's sitting over here in the corner. And um, Mr. <coughs> Attorney, can you pass those up to the council? Uh, about two months ago, the Prescott Courier ran an article um, mentioning that their mayor had uh, was putting a yellow ribbon around a uh, one of their um, pillars at, the, at their city hall. So after talking with our mayor here, uh, he wanted to also do something for people who may de be deployed. Uh, at the city of Prescott, they were doing it just for uh, employees who are deployed. 
uh, the mayor asked if we could extend that to our community so I put this tree in here for right now but we're going to be moving it out to the lobby out in the foyer um, and we're going to have an honor tree uh, we're calling it the yellow ribbon honor tree and I want to thank Lois uh, Bork and Kessel in our office for kind of getting all the details put together um, we're going to be putting applications out through the Legion we've met with uh, three of the council members who are veterans and um, we'll have we'll just reach out to anybody in our community who may have somebody in their family who's deployed they can turn in an application we'll do a yellow ribbon and put it on the tree out in the out in the foyer uh, in honor of their deployment so if you have any questions on that you can contact the manager's office and lastly I wanted to mention uh, for anybody in the out there in the community that doesn't recognize who's sitting next to me is our new attorney uh, Andrew McGuire same firm our previous attorney had retired so Andrew's going to be sitting up here with us so. <laughs> so that's it for me mr. McGuire do you have anything to say uh, no uh, for the for the council members who ha have met me last time you may have heard I actually this is my second tour of Chino Valley I when I first started practicing 24 years ago I worked with Bill Farrell the town attorney at the time so happy to be back same lovely place it was before and, and uh, always interested to continue to, to do work up here you guys have have uh, a, a special place in my heart from the beginning so I hope that we can continue on and we're gonna all miss Phyllis those of us who don't get to retire quite yet are really gonna miss Phyllis so um, hopefully we can continue on with our good work as well thanks thank you anyone else have anything Okay, let me go on to item C, recognition of town council, commission, board, and committee members, and other town volunteers. And this is my uh, letter. Dear town council members, town and board and commission members, and volunteers for the town. As we observe National Volunteer Week, April 15th through 21st, 2018, on behalf of the town of Chino Valley, I want to express great appreciation to each of you for your efforts for the town throughout the year. To thank you adequately is just impossible. To our council members, board and commission members, and volunteers, you each choose to spend hours of your own time in many capacities, serving at various levels for the town, sacrificing your personal time for the greater good of our community. Each of you has selfishly chosen, selflessly chosen to donate your own time for the betterment of others, placing the needs of others above your own. An individual's time is a precious commodity, and once it is gone, it cannot be replaced. The town is grateful for your satisfy, satisfy, <clears throat> sacrifice and dedication. Given the many needs facing our communities, the fiscal constraints facing government at all levels, volunteerism helps communities to meet these needs. I am proud to join in a national salute that will highlight the importance of citizen engagement recognize the dedication of community volunteers and inspire more residents to get involved in their community please know that through your efforts each of you have made the town of chino valley a better place to live raise your families work and retire we look forward to honoring you at the upcoming volunteer appreciation reception which will be held thursday may 10th 2018 from 3 to 4 p.m at the chino valley senior center so we ask all our volunteers, please come in so we have an opportunity to honor you in person. Thank you. Let's go on to D, quarterly status report on residential and commercial <coughs> billing permits, code compliance matters, and UDO rewrite. Mr. Sinks. Thank you, Mayor, Council. I just have a brief presentation for you. I know in the past when you've received some of these quarterly reports, you've had numerous PowerPoint slides with a bunch of numbers on it. <clears throat> I'm just gonna try to keep it simple so you get a snapshot of where we're at in the first quarter, primarily uh, compared to last quarter of, last, of 2017. So we're gonna go over building permit uh, numbers, the revenue statistics related to permit and plan review, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about code compliance, <coughs> zoning cases, and then um, the UDO rewrite. <coughs> so if you look up at the slide up on the, on the board here, um, you'll see up at the top, October to December 2017 was our fourth quarter numbers. It was already a very busy quarter. Um, we had issued, and I've only got the counts that you see up there. If you look at the first, I guess, bulk of information, you go you see permit type. These are all new permits, and the subtypes would be new commercial buildings, new multifamily buildings, and new single-family residences. 
um, those are brand new buildings. It's not permits on existing buildings or tenant improvements for new uh, for new tenants. So we had um, we had one new commercial building, three new multifamily buildings, and 37 new single family home permits. And those would be site built home permits. Those don't include manufactured home permits. Those would be swept into the larger number at the bottom, which is 146. So of that 146, those three categories above are a part of that, and the rest would be all other types of permits. Like I said, tenant improvements, manufactured homes, electrical permits. If I want to build a porch, those sorts of things. So between those 146 permits. Um, we generated four, almost $470,000 in permit and plan review fees, which is a significant number. And then the valuation of the assets that were being built uh, through those permits was about $10.5 million. So we had about $10.5 million in investment in our town in the, for, in the fourth quarter through the permit activity. Compared to that, um, it's, we didn't get another commercial building this quarter, but you can see our single-family site-built homes jumped up to 51, which is a significant number for a small town. Um, that's just 51 home permits in the course of three months for Chino Valley. So that's your Molly Rays, that's your Highlands Ranch, that's your Bright Stars, and then you know any other homes that are being site-built throughout the town. And the associated permit and plan review revenue is nearly 590000 so we jumped 120000 in permit and plan review wow. in just a quarter. Uh, that does not include sewer and water buy-in fees. This is just permit and plan review. So um, you'll see that the asset value is about $10,500,000, um, slightly down a bit, but that's just the nature of the type of construction it was. I mean, if you want to do the math, it turns out to about $175,000 homes. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly how accurate that is based on valuation because we just run that off the permit information that we generate. Um, I just want to ask if you had any questions about that before I go on to the next slide. Question. These are very aggregate numbers. I don't have all of the nitty-gritty details in, in memory, but it's Questions? just pretty aggregate. I hear none. Okay, great. great. Um, so that's a snapshot of permit and plan review. So you can imagine uh, Dan and Jim are keeping very busy out in the field with doing these plan review inspections and inspections out in the field. Um, code compliance cases, we've seen an uptick in those as well, although the, the nature of those has been slightly changing as we kind of refocus efforts on a broader range of code compliance. Um, in fourth quarter, we had 30 new cases, 70% were related to weeds and tumbleweeds, 13% um, outdoor storage, likely unscreened or illegal, and then 17% miscellaneous, which could be zoning code violations, it could be light nuisances, any number of things that get swept in. First quarter, though, we've been kind of trying to hold back a little bit on the tumbleweed complaints and focus more on other things. We've had, uh, again, outdoor storage remains there around 10, 13 percent, and then 54 percent miscellaneous is starting to go after, you know, RVs on single-family lots where there's no primary residence, people are living in them illegally. Um, it could be outdoor storage, or I should say um, uh, illegal signage or property maintenance issues, garbage, things like that. Um, although those cases represent what we're doing in a quarter, keep in mind that many of these cases can take months to process, so our code compliance officer is processing simultaneously probably three times those number of cases at any one time. So um, That's it for the slides. I just wanted to give you some updates on zoning activity. We are running right now about 17 new applications since the beginning of the year. That's what we did in all of last year. Um, so you can imagine uh, zoning activity precedes permit activity. So hopefully that's a good sign that the economy stays strong and that these zoning cases turn into real development. Um, and it's any type of development. We've got commercial, uh, as you know, as you've heard, multifamily development and lots of single family development. So lastly, uh, we have uh, met about four weeks ago, the UDO subcommittee met to get a first uh, preview of the restructured zoning ordinance that I presented to the team. Uh, we kind of went through that structure, why we went from where we were to where we're now. Um, it's modeled after some really well-built codes that I've worked in, and, and uh, Andrew's firm has also been a part of actually rewriting um, in other jurisdictions. So we are meeting tomorrow uh, to review land use definitions, more or less all the permitted uses in our town, uh, and prospective new land uses and revised definitions to improve that. We'll also be meeting to talk about uh, potential constituent groups that we should put together. A uh, perfect example is if we're going to talk about do we modify our single family residential districts, we should involve our constituents such as uh, realtors, uh, home builders, developers, et cetera. So we bring them all to the table and get solid input as we look at revising content. So we'll be putting those groups together, which is the precursor to an actual citizen review rollout. Uh, with it being such a big endeavor, we need to do a full rollout, which will have many, many neighborhood meetings. That's it. Questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. For their interesting report, and this things look pretty good. I'm not going to do a break now. I think they've all left. Okay. Yeah. Let's go on to the consent agenda. 
All those items listed below are considered to be routine and may be enacted by one motion. Any council member may request to remove an item from the consent agenda to be considered and discussed separately. Are there any items on the consent agenda you'd like to move? Pull. This side? Not me. Would you read the consent agenda, please? Yes, ma'am. Consideration and possible action to waive the bidding requirements and approve purchase of a New Holland TS6-110 tractor with mower attachments from Bingman Equipment in an amount not to exceed $114,319.88 pursuant to a corporative purchase bid by the State of Arizona contract ADSP-0160358.01. Read them all. Yeah. yeah. Consideration and possible action to approve an extension with Lexington Law Firm for prosecutorial services through June 30th, 2020, in the amount of $3,250 per month. C. Consideration and possible action to approve addendum number one to contract for legal services effective July 1st, 2018, between the town of Chino Valley and Gus Rosenfeld. PLC. D. Consideration and possible action to accept the March 27, 2018 regular meeting minutes. And E. Consideration and possible action to accept the April 4th, 2018 study session minutes. Can I have a motion for approval? I can. Make a motion. We accept uh, consent agenda A through E. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Let's go on to seven action items. The council may vote to recess the public meeting and hold an executive session on any item on this agenda pursuant to ARS 3841030383 a 3 for the purpose of discussion or consultation for legal advice with the town attorney. Executive sessions are not open to the public and no action may be taken in executive session. Item A is consideration of possible action to one, hold a public hearing regarding the proposal Proposed change to the town's admission fees for the Chino Valley Aquatic Center. And the second part is approved rev resolution number 18115, increasing the town's admission fees effective May 24, 2018. Mr. Bruner, would you tell us what we're doing here? Okay, evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I was going to bring a big PowerPoint presentation and a full blown two hour uh, presentation, but it looks like we have a lot on the agenda, so I'm going to do a uh, revised quick edition and uh, throw that out. And um, my apologies to Council um, uh, Councilman M Miller. I, I'll do the long one next time oh, for gee, you. Thank you. <laughs> 60, <laughs> 60 days ago, I came before you with a request of notice of intention to increase the aquatics fees. The town of Chino Valley last reviewed and increased its aquatics fee rates on October 23rd. 2012. Since the aquatic center has opened, the town's general fund has subsidized the operation of the facility each year. The, sub the subsidy averages about $150,000. When the aquatic uh, center last raised its pool rates in 2012, which was six years ago, the minimum wage was $7.65 an hour. Last year, as you know, the minimum wage went up to $10 an hour, and you know in January it went up to ten fifty, and in 2020 it goes to $12 an hour. As the minimum wage goes higher, it pushes that subsidy higher, you know? So in order to keep the sub subsidy from increasing each year, staff is recommending a gradual rate increase over the next three years to coincide with the increases of minimum wage and to make capital repairs and improvements at the aquatic center. With the fee increase, our projected loss this year will be $133,800. Therefore, staff is recommending a 50 cent increase for the daily fee with a 25 cent increase every year into, until 2020. And even then, we'll still be 25 cents cheaper than the nearest municipal pool facility okay. mayor and council thank you questions before we go I have no questions 
Uh, I need a motion to uh, go into public hearing. Okay, uh, make a motion to go into public hearing. Second. I second it. All in favor, aye. 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 We are now in public hearing. Is there anyone that wants to speak to this proposed increase to the aquatic fees? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to recess from public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Second. Aye. 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 Okay. We're back to uh, <coughs> this item. Now I'm going to ask for uh, a, a motion to approve resolution number 18115. Okay, make a motion to approve resolution number 18 1115, increasing the town's administration fees effective May 24th, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you, Mayor Thank and you, Council. Mr. Brewer. Let's go on to item B. Consideration of possible action to approve a conditional use permit, CUP 18002, for approximately 2.82 acres of real property generally located 274 feet north of the northwest corner of West Road 3 North and State Route 89 at 2062 North State Route 89 to allow the installation and replacement of an electric sign in the CL Commercial Light Zoning District. Owner, St. Catherine's Reborn Church, Mr. Sanks. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this item might sound familiar to you. Uh, this the, the, the church received an approval for a CEP for an electric sign about three years ago. Unfortunately, uh, somebody ran it over and uh, knocked it out. You'll so be. instead of rebuilding the exact same sign they had, um, they'd like to build a taller sign, take advantage mm -hmm. of some code allowances to go higher. And in consultation with their legal counsel, there's no provision in our code for staff at any level to wantonly approve it at the staff level because CEPs are approved by council and any associated exhibits of that CEP are, are approved with that motion and, and approval. So this is kind of a, a kind of those small routine items. I can go through it quickly. <clears throat> More or less, you see the elevations in your packet. Um, I won't get <clears throat> deep into the property information, but that's the original sign that they built. It was shorter. And the message panel that was electronic was closer to the ground. Um, they wanted to go higher um, and do this sign. So more or less, they're just asking for reapproval of the sign in a slightly modified location. But we've attached the kind of standard conditions that we've become comfortable with as we've uh, uh, applied to the Olson's grain project, where we have static message changes that work with ADOT, um, messages that are pertain to the church itself, so it's not considered a billboard, et cetera. And we are recommending approval. Questions? None. None. Questions? Nope. I need a motion then. Okay, make a motion that uh, we approve conditional use permit CUP 18-002 for approximately 2.82 acres of real estate property located at 6062 North State Route 89 to permit the proposed electric sign in the CL Commercial Light Zoning District subject to the conditions recommended by staff. Second. We have a, we have a second. All, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank you. You're on for the next one, I say. Let me read through it. Consideration of possible action to approve ordinance number 844, rezoning approximately 44 acres of real property at 1204 East Perkinsville Road from AR <coughs> Agriculture Residential Five Acre Minimum Zoning District to SR point, uh, 0 0.16 single family residential 7,000 square foot minimum lot area zoning district with a planned area development overlay zoning district to modify the SR 0 0.16 zoning district development standards. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I have the PowerPoint up, and for those of that haven't seen it yet, it's very similar to the one that was presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, so Perkinsville Road is a proposed uh, road is a proposed new subdivision. Um, located directly north of the uh, community center that we just talked about. Um, so it's at the northeast corner of Road 1 East and East Perkinsville Road. The property had um, been acquired a few years ago by the current owner in an effort to cultivate medical marijuana. That business plan didn't work out for whatever reason. And the intention here is to uh, take advantage of its site proximity uh, to the community center, the SR89, not too far from Old Home Manor Industrial Park. Uh, to propose uh, a smaller lot subdivision than we're typical, typically used to seeing. As you know, most of our subject properties have been about acre lots. Uh, this one is proposed to be 7,000 square foot lots. Here's an outline of the exact property. There are some structures on the property that would uh, likely only remain until the point of development. 
Um, the property is 44.3 acres. They are proposing um, uh, single family residences. It's not clear yet if they'll be site built. The indication is that it would likely be site built, um, somewhat style like production homes located here. The required 7,000 square foot lot minimum would be uh, maintained with this request. They're not asking to go smaller than that with the planned area development, although they are asking for some relief on development standards, which are more current industry standards that we see for lots of this size. And the total number of lots right now is 159. Dimensions would be approximately 156 by 125, and the overall density would be 3.6 units per acre. This is the conceptual site plan, otherwise known as the development plan that's required with the planned area development. In the top right corner, it's got a typical lot fit diagram that reflects their request for side, front, and rear yard setbacks. You'll see there's two entrances to the development, one off road, one east, as well as Perkinsville. Uh, they've worked closely with staff through a couple iterations of this to ensure that we have centralized open space so the proximity of open space to residents throughout the project is more or less equivalent it's not all tucked in a corner and then uh, residents can travel through the open space spine to get out to um, perkinsville road and then of course cross over at the intersection to the community park so they're fortunate to be in very close proximity to our uh, one of our largest parks with amenities with the overlay, they're, they're welcome to use the overlay to um, create a unique project and propose some minor revisions to the development standards, which they have, and I'll show you that on another slide. I'll have a chart for you. In return, we typically look to see um, them enhance the project, perhaps through landscaping, open space, amenities, those sorts of things, and they have provided documents that are a part of your packet that I'll show up here that indicate that they have stepped up. Uh, they'll do masonry walls that are decorative landscape perimeters on all roadways as well as throughout the interior of the development. You'll see here, this is the, these are the development standards, uh, 7,000 square feet. They'll meet our code required 50 foot minimum lot frontage. Most of the lots are oversized. Their setback off of Perkinsville Road is requested to be 25 feet. That's because the 50 foot setback intention was for large lots that front our, our main roadways. They're set back an appropriate distance. In this case, they'll be providing a landscape buffer, and then the house will actually be backing to the roadway with a masonry wall and set back further because of its own on-lot set, uh, on setback. And these are very typical setbacks, typical to Bright Star and other smaller lot subdivisions we have. The minimum building setback off of Road 3 North, which is not yet developed, um, and we're not even certain that it will be. We will be taking the right-of-way, but we may not ever see it develop. That'll be up to Frank or Frank's uh, successor in 20 years um, if we ever do punch through. And then the minimum front yard setbacks have gone from 25 feet with a request for 15 feet to livable and 20 feet to garage, which are very similar to what's been approved at Bright Star. Um, and so we find that an industry standard really for 7,000 square foot lots. And the reason we do livable and the garage is that the more attractive portion of the home or the porch portion of the home can come forward closer to the street where it's more um, it creates a nicer streetscape, but then we always make sure we have at least 20 feet to the garage so we don't have large trucks overhanging into the street. Additional development standards here for side and rear currently we re require 10 and 10. Um, we have a mix in town of 5 and 5, 5 and 10. Most of them are, are 5 and 10 or 10 and 10. They are requesting that and staff has been supportive so far. And the rest of the development standards are shown below. Again, the justification for these deviations is that they're providing additional documents to enhance the quality of the project, the landscape plan, wall perimeter design plan, et cetera, which are shown here. This is the conceptual landscape plan that shows the trail location in the center part of the project with a tot lot and ramada and play area for the residents. It's kind of a local little neighborhood park intended for these residents only. And then they have the more regional park, as you know, to the south of Perkinsville Road. They've provided additional um, uh, details on amenities. This would be their conceptual perimeter wall plan. The walls that face uh, the rights of way or most visible from public view will be an enhanced decorative block wall, while the walls that face the uh, facility to the east and to the less visible portions in the northwest corner would be a typical six foot builder wall. It's concrete. And then the exhibit three here. So as we go into the platting process, should they wish to move forward in the near or far term, um, they've provided these as an indication of the quality of the amenities. So when we get the pre uh, preliminary plat and its associated landscape plans, we would be looking back on the zoning approval with these exhibits to ensure that we get the quality that they presented to us at the zoning phase. The, town, the town's water and sewer system would serve the project and both are available in Perkinsville Road. Um, in working with Frank 
and the applicant. This is in regards to the dedications that will be required so that any roadway improvements would fit within the town's right of way after the dedication. <laughs> And they did provide a traffic impact statement that noted the daily traffic trips that they'd have to um, accommodate for. And so it's about 1,502 traffic trips per day. <coughs> so in regards to this, the overall consideration that staff has taken into this is, you know, what is its access? What are the amenities? And how does it better serve the town? We don't really get a whole bunch of smaller lot um, projects. Um, and if we do, we really need to look carefully at where they're located. Uh, this does have excellent access to 89. It's across from our nicest park. And it's sandwiched between the 89 and our future industrial park. We've talked many, many times about needing um, workforce housing. Not necessarily cheap or affordable housing, but perhaps somewhat more affordable than what you could buy in Molly Ray. Um, this kind of fits the bill right in the middle and provides a housing choice so that our young workers uh, have a place where they can buy their first home. So we've been looking at all things considered. You know, when we do look at seeing projects with this type of density, um, where can we best locate them? And with its proximity to a community core, as identified in the general plan, its proximity to the industrial park, the community park, and the 89, we feel it's a good fit. Uh, we are recommending approval of the project, subject to several conditions. As stated before, they will be responsible for adhering to the exhibits provided to you for your review, which help you to make your decision. So they'll need to be in general conformance with their conceptual site plan, perimeter wall plans, and landscape plan, uh, with a small uh, caveat on there as approved or modified by the town's development services director, which would be me or my successor. Uh, so they have some flexibility when a builder is in tow. If they want to change things up a bit, uh, we can keep within the intent of any ordinance approval should you wish to approve it. Uh, the rest, uh, it, those details are located below. And ultimately, if you look at condition 1D, um, through P&Z's recommendation, we, and we had some members of the public speak, that they want to make sure that we're cognizant of shuttle transport or bus transport to our, our new developments. We will be um, looking to provide a bus pullout or shuttle pullout on the exterior of the development. So uh, passengers can be safely picked up and dropped off without having to take the bus into the neighborhood. So we, uh, the applicant agreed to it, so we added condition 1D since PNZ. That's it. I'm happy to have answer questions. questions. We'll start at this end. Okay. okay, I've got a couple here. First, is it an age like we had some of the park model home on 7,000 square foot lots uh, previously over on 1 West? Council member, that's a good question. It actually is not an age-restricted community. Um, we would actually write that language into the PAD language as we did for uh, Town Center PAD and West Meadows. Okay. It's all ages. Then the next, what type of homes will these be? Stick built, park model, or pre-manufactured, or mobile? Um, right now, as the way our code is written, there is no restriction between site built or manufactured. They need to come forward with if they wanted to do basically an RV park or a park model, and that would be a further amendment. That's not proposed now. Um, okay. You're welcome to ask the applicant. Uh, she's representing the owner from law firm Gamage and Burnham. She's here tonight. I don't believe that they've made any decisions on specific housing type. Uh, they don't intend to build this themselves. They intend to perhaps sell it or joint venture if they can in the future. That answers my questions. No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. I'm just curious if there's been any conversation regarding uh, a crosswalk from the entrance of Perkinsville across the street to the park. Uh, uh, Vice Mayor Turner, that has been brought up. I've actually talked to Frank briefly about it. Would the number of pedestrian traffic trips warrant an enhanced crosswalk? Likely with signage and striping on the road. I don't know that it would be enough to warrant like the, the small flashing pedestrian signals, but I think as we get into the platting phase, that's when we would ident identify specific improvements. And if it's the wish of the council, we can be sure to note that for when we do the platting phase. Yeah, I think it's going to be a necessary, especially if you have children in there. In the know, park across the street. Pathway. Yeah. It's an attractive nuisance to run across that road to yeah. the pool. To the pool area mm -hmm. and all the rec areas. Yeah. Right. I think that, that should be a requirement if it happens. Uh, Mayor and Vice Mayor Frank is here to address it if you'd like. Okay. Sure, and, and Mayor and Council, just on this subject, there there is some concerns that as we as we develop the engineering documents and, and look through it and fine tune the, the traffic analysis as we go forward, a few considerations are um, how to handle the conflict between traffic and pedestrians on Perkinsville. Do we want a, a mid block or uncontrolled crossing there? Do we want some sort of crossing such as a, a rapid flashing beacon or I've even done, they call them hawk signals, the, the pedestrian activated signals. 
those are options we can look at and we also look at how it affects the intersection at, at one east what kind of treatment we want to do there does that warrant um i think correct me if i'm wrong it's a two-way stop right now yes. we would also look at that to see if the the traffic loading would warrant a four-way stop or other type of intersection that treatment there and <clears throat> and we really need to analyze it from an engineering perspective as a whole and then and then follow the the engineering trail so to speak as to what's the safest that follows all of the federal and state and local standards on that so uh i think i think that should be handled jason but whatever he does through his planning process to note that we need to yeah. to look at that and and make sure council is uh comfortable with what's put in there i'd be and more than happy to represent council on that safety crossing that highway yeah yeah I'm, I'm i'm concerned with just having some sort of crosswalk without any additional treatment there or something i would want some sort of control on it if there's something there and we okay. could look at the the numbers and and decide the proper treatment to use um back to jason if you're i'm are we actually we're doing a, a zoning change that's correct Council with a pad attached to the zoning change that's correct and uh, the way the code writes it's our we have an underlying zoning district which is the sro.16 um, and then the pad overlay is on top of that and that allows you the ability to modify underlying development standards so it's a zone change just a more complicated one than some of our simple ones <coughs> okay complicated so therefore I'm, I'm stumbling on this a little oh, no. bit. it's okay it's normally a pa thank you I, normally a, a pad you actually have to, uh, time restrictions that's attached to a pad correct a councilman mendoza typically you will will not um it's a condition the use permits would they have time uh, time conditions attached with, with this being a, a zoning land use decision the determination is whether the the, the proposal with its PAD overlay request is a good fit for the land and you adopt an ordinance and it should exist in perpetuity. We don't really do reversionary, reversionary zoning anymore. So the, the PAD that they proposed is directly tied to that rezoning. That is correct. Councilmember Mendoza, if, if, if the council moved to approve the ordinance that's proposed, it would include, all of the conditions attached, all of the exhibits attached, and it runs with the land in perpetuity. Okay. Um, second thing is, would you review the uh, dedication <coughs> part again and possibly go back a couple Left. pictures, if you would? Oh, okay, oh, certainly. Yeah. I didn't know if you were reading it, if you would like sorry. me to read it out loud. No, certainly. Couple, uh, <clears throat> Yes, we actually, um, this, you know, as part of the project, the, the re review process, the public works director, aka Frank, uh, needs to ensure that whatever a roadways, what's existing and what's necessary for the project to be dedicated, that language is included in, in this, and that when we do the platting process and the, when the town so wishes, they'll take that property for roadway improvements in the future. And we have those listed up here based okay. on what our current standards Has are. That, okay, go, go back another slide or two. Uh, you right. Let me look at the land plan. E either one. Okay. Um, road dedication, Perkinsville and Road One East. How much road dedication are we looking at requiring there? The land plan should reflect the dedication on them since all they're dimensioned and they're you know, they're engineered. But I'd probably deflect to uh, the Frank on the actual paving widths and all that stuff. Okay. He's I'll, grabbing, I'll, he's, I'll, I'll he's say this kind of. So I can understand uh, a typical road width is how wide? 50 feet? Right. Uh, well, it's if I can answer that, the, the right of way width, half width is 50 feet uh, per our standards on both One East and Perkinsville. 100 foot total when you figure in both sides of the street. Okay. Being with the, with the development that we're anticipating out at Old Home Manor, Perkinsville could quite possibly require added width down the road. Mm -hmm. Are we taking that into consideration on any kind of dedicated width, especially on Perkinsville? 
I believe we're they're dedicating the full width to the current standards, which would be 50 feet from center line on this side. Which would allow a which would allow a hundred foot right away. Which would allow possibly a four lane road. Yes. Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. okay? Yes. It's it's the widest in our town standards that we have, and they're asking for no relief on that. Okay. Great. Thank you. If I may add, Councilmember Mendoza, we we have a um, traffic impact study that will be. Uh, we'll be bringing in a contract amendment for EPS group. They'll be doing a, a, a area-wide traffic study for Old Hope Manor to even further define what roadway improvements would be necessary at build-out. I changed my mind. I do have a question. Okay. On this picture right here along Perkinsville Road, is that a sidewalk I'm seeing by those trees? Uh, Council Member Miller, yes, that will, will, they'll be required to put a Good sidewalk on Perkinsville. Boys. Yes, we're on it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, I'd the bus. <clears throat> you said there was going to be a turnout for the bus. Is that this piece here on one east? Uh, Council member uh, best if you look right now We don't have the exact location identified um, because it was done at PNZ. We have not done any okay. minor modifications, but it's likely going to occur Right over here somewhere in here where it's safely away from the intersection But it's convenient for the entry here and likely could it actually be convenient to cross to go to the park. Thank you. I'd rather buck why I it, it, <laughs> it could be north of that entry. It's, we just haven't done final design on it. Okay. And I wanted to add earlier when there was a conversation about the crossing and those sorts of things, you are able to add a condition 1E that could suggest, you know, that uh, a, a crossing, a safe crossing to the community center, will, will if it's mid-block or at the intersection, will be explored and uh, installed as approved by the town's public works director. That could be a very simple thing, so that puts it on the map and... It's please, not forgotten. Please include that. I think we'd all feel a lot better if that was there. All right. Okay. <laughs> and the applicant's fine with that. So it would be item 1E, um, a, a, a safe crossing or pedestrian crossing shall be provided or explored upon okay. um, either mid-block or at the intersection as approved by the town's public works director. Okay. Okay. Everybody? Done. Done. Can I have a motion? Okay. Sure. I can make a motion to approve ordinance number 18-844, rezoning approximately 44 acres of real property generally located on the northeast corner of North Road 1 East and East Perkinsville Road at 1204 East Perkinsville Road. From AR5 agricultural residential to five acre minimum zoning district to SR 0 0.16 single family residential 7,000 square foot minimum lot area. Zoning district with a planned area development overlay. Zoning district subject to conditions recommended by staff. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Let's go on item D. Uh, Mayor, before you get started, I need to recuse myself on this one. Okay. Let it be noted that Councilman Mendoza has recused himself on this item. Consideration... Possible action to approve ordinance number 18845, rezoning approximately 2.5 acres of real property located east of the corner of Staley Lane and Durham Drive at 3845 Durham Drive from CL Commercial Light Zoning District to CH Commercial Heavy Zoning District. Mr. Lerma. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, Council mem members. Before you, you have an application by the applicant, Mr. Corey Mendoza for a zone change. Property is located off of Stately Lane and Durham Drive, east of State Route 89 at 3845 Durham Drive, Chino Valley, Hazy. Property is uh, currently zoned commercial light. It is, it is approximately 2.5 acres. Uh, the property is currently vacant and is designated in the general plan as a land use designation of commercial multifamily residential. As you see here in, the, in this uh, exhibit, uh, the location of where Mr. Uh, Mendoza's property is at uh, is surrounded by intense commercial uses or heavy uses uh, in nature. We have a uh, mini storage to the north. We have uh, manufacturing to the, to the west, uh, truck storage to the south of the property, and uh, adjacent to the street, we have heavy commercial as well. Uh, uses their intense in nature. Uh, 
The zoning of, of Mr. Mendoza's property is currently commercial light, as stated before. His request for a zone change will support that zoning of, to the property to the north and to the south. Uh, this property here that has a commercial light, uh, we're currently working with them as a zoning cleanup. This will become a uh, heavy commercial based on the uh, current manufacturing uses that the property is having. So this as well is gonna be commercial, commercial heavy in the near future. So the, the zoning surrounding the Mr. Mendoza's property is supported by the same zoning that he, that he is requesting. Uh, at, here's another slide just showing that the commercial multifamily residential zoning will be in compliance with the commercial heavy zoning that he is requesting. Uh, Mr. Mendoza conducted a neighborhood meeting on uh, March 20th. Uh, one uh, surrounding property owner attended that meeting. Uh, she supported the, the request for a zone change. She just wanted to know what the time frame for development was. Here's a site plan that Mr. Mendoza uh, submitted, as you see here. He uh, is proposing to develop it with two separate structures. One of them will be the office uh, and the maintenance shop. For the for the commercial trucking and the the structure to the further to the south uh, is going to be a storage a caretaker residence. Uh, staff supports uh, Mr. Mendoza's request for a zone change. The type of use that Mr. Mendoza is bringing into the area is not going to have a heavy impact based on the surrounding uses of the property. Uh, if a uh, council has any questions of myself or the applicant, are there questions? No, man. No. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> no. No. I just want to make him squirm a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Do I have a motion? You do. Make a motion to approve ordinance number 18-845, rezoning approximately 2.5 acres of real property located at 3845 Durham Drive from CL Commercial Light Zoning District to CH Commercial Heavy Zoning District. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. I'd like to thank staff tonight for the professional presentations that they made and make it a lot easier for us to make a decision. Uh, and our next item is to go into executive session. Council may vote to recess the regular meeting and hold an executive session, which will not be open to public for the following purpose. An executive session pursuant to ARS 3841030A1 for discussion or consideration of employment, assignment, appointment, or salary of the town manager. I need a motion. Make a motion. We're going to executive session. Uh, second. Is there a second? Uh, motion and a second. We'll take a five minute break and then we'll go into executive session. Aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye laddie. Aye, aye, aye. Break motion, we adjourn. <laughs> do we have to come back for recording or what do we need to do, Cecilia? We've got to stay hmm? <clears throat> No action was taken. No, but yeah, let me go see, if she's back there. see if she's back there and return a recording on and we'll finish up and go home. Yeah, because the audience is excited. Yeah. You could almost get an echo, huh? <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, we are adjourned from executive session. Discussion with the town manager of performance. Uh, there was no decision made. Uh, and I'm asking for the motion, Jack. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second? I'll, I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Good night. Thank you. Great seeing everybody. Thank you.